What is going on, football fans? It's Diggs Report. Back to you with another video. And look, I got a mega beer with me. So why is it meant with me? Hey, man, how you doing? Yeah, we're going to do a little preview on the uh, Merrimack Virginia Tech Pinstripe Bowl uh, coming up on December what, 29th at 2.15. So yeah. it should be a good one. Oh, yeah. Two old ACC rivals playing against each other once again. And these two teams haven't played each other since, what was it, Maryland's last year in the ACC or the year or the year before that? Yeah, 2013 when C.J. Brown, uh, he, he had the uh, touchdown, the rushing touchdown in overtime uh, in Blacksburg, 27-24 win for Maryland, got them to bowl eligibility. Um, so definitely a pretty, pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy last game. Um, I mentioned on the, the podcast, the Show and Tell podcast, I was down in uh, South Carolina, actually, a lot for the tailgating for the Florida game, and a bunch of us were watching the game for against Virginia Tech, so uh, it's been, been a long time. Yeah, it has. And these two teams have played each other 31 times. Maryland has the slight edge, 16 to 15. So we'll see if Maryland keeps that edge or if Virginia Tech's able to tie it up. Right now, let's go over Virginia Tech and how they got here. Because Virginia Tech, they kind of had a little bit of an up and down season. They started off strong with holding North Carolina to 10 points, beating them. And North Carolina was ranked number 10 at the time. But things started to kind of fall downhill a little bit and that ended with head coach Justin Forte Justin Fonte Fonte thank you Fonte ended up leaving and now they just hired uh what was it uh Penn State's defensive coordinator yeah Brent Pry uh yeah. he's the former defensive coordinator co-defense coordinator at Penn State um so he's coming in and then JC Price pretty much considered a Virginia Tech lifer um mm -hmm. serving as the uh, interim head coach uh to complete the, to complete the season and then uh, obviously filling in uh, for the bowl game. So uh, definitely a big move. And, um, you know, we're talking about coaching changes, things like that. Virginia Tech also uh, hired Tyler Bowen, uh, former Maryland offensive lineman, served as the offensive line coach at Maryland for uh, one year before going to Penn State, um, leaving the Jaguars NFL organization to, to become the Hokies' new offensive coordinator. So um, definitely a lot of familiar faces on the on the new staff. Uh, so it should, should be kind of interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, it definitely should be. And for Virginia Tech, let's go over their offense. And offensively, they do a more balanced approach. I mean, they rush for more yards than they have passed, but it's pretty close, like under 200 yards, the difference between those two. And really, the one person you've got to look out for is their running back. It's Rasheen uh, Blackshear. This guy has not had a lot of carries, but he's averaged almost six yards a carry. And this guy is dangerous with the ball in his hands. Yeah, uh, I think especially, you know, we're going to talk about uh, or highlight um, some of the, the guys for the Hokies that are out for this game. And wide receiver Trey Turner is a guy that mm -hmm. won't be available. It was a big piece for him. Um, but I think a guy like uh, with Trey Turner out, Raheem Blackshear, um, he's definitely the guy that uh, make, makes that running back room grow. Um, he's kind of the, the lead back for him, but does a really good job coming out of the backfield and, and making his hands available as a receiving target uh, in the passing attack. So I think a guy like Trey Turner, where you kind of lose that elusiveness, that 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 big playability on the outside, uh, kind of would be kind of intrigued to see Blackshear how how the Hokies kind of have him line up, whether he can uh, you know line up in the slot, things like that. Um, kind of find different ways to get him the ball. Um, so I think. He's definitely the name to know. Um, and from everything that I've gathered, uh, talking to a couple of Virginia Tech fans, things like that, um, if, you, if you can stop the run against Virginia Tech, uh, you have a good chance at winning. So that's, uh, that, that's uh, definitely, definitely would be interesting to watch. And then obviously Maryland fans might, that name Raheem Blackshear might ring a bell. Um, he transferred it in from uh, Rutgers. So we've gone against him a couple of times in Big Ten play. Yeah, uh, let's go over their quarterback a little bit. It's uh, Braxton, uh, if I... Pronounce this wrong, please correct me, Ahmed. Uh, Burmonster? Is that you it? You know what? You know what? I had to master the last name Tagovailoa. Uh, I'm not going to try and butcher this one, it, <laughs> so, but but you definitely am, uh, more of an inexperienced guy. Um, he yeah, can can run the ball pretty well. Uh, yeah, he's proper. yeah over five for hundred yards. I mean, four point five yards a carry. I mean, he's right behind Blackshear in terms of attempts. So yeah, he can effectively run the ball. So got to be watch out for him as well. But, exactly. passing, but passing, he's had under 2,000 yards. Yeah, I do think it's kind of interesting, though. I mean, just kind of looking at um, Virginia Tech's offense, when you think about Raheem Blackshear, what he can do out of the backfield, and then you look at Virginia Tech's at fourth in the ACC with 190 rushing yards per game, and then the passing attack, uh, 13th in the ACC, 100. Mm -hmm. 
just shy of 180 yards per game. So when you think of, um, you know, obviously, like I said, not having Trey Turner, and then you think of, you know, how well Blackshear has been able to run the football and then uh, Braxton uh, Burmeister, uh, for him to, uh, he's shown the ability to consistently uh, pick up a positive yard. So um, I think it'll be really interesting because, you know, Loxley's kind of talked about this year, how when, when there are teams where you kind of look at them and you know, you need to run to stop the run. Um, and Maryland hasn't always lived up to the billing, uh, even when they, they know what's coming. So I think that'll be very interesting to see how they, how they react, how they adjust with the uh, added time off. And you mentioned Trey Turner, but Trayvon Robinson is also not going to play. He's in the transfer portal. So it's going to be Caleb Smith. That was their next leading receiver. And he's only had 20 catches on the year. So we'll see if Virginia Tech is able to get some kind of passing game going. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Another another uh, notable absence in that Virginia Tech offense is going to be tight end James Mitchell, who's a guy he's actually, yep. um, if, if I, I didn't verify this, but I've believe that he ended up actually visiting Maryland uh, when he was a high school recruit, but uh, was a guy that was, you know, Virginia Tech all the way has played a pretty big role um, in their uh, passing attack. And obviously he declared uh, for the NFL draft. Um, so he will not be available. Uh, so I think that'll, that, that's, that's another um, notable absence for him. We've talked about their offense. Let's move over to their defense and they suffered another, uh, just three big losses. The first one was defensive back, Jermaine Waller, uh, Avalon alum right yep yep he, Avalon uh, alum he leads the team in interceptions with four he's the only guy on the team that has multiple interceptions on the year he declared for the draft and he's gonna get ready for the draft and two defensive linemen are out Jordan Williams and um Amari Barno yeah Amari Barno yep. thank you yeah thank you and he's second on the team in sex so those are three really big losses right there however they do have their leading tackler and leading sack guy uh Dax uh, Holyfield yeah, so Jordan Williams is definitely a guy where um, he can actually transfer. He's a Virginia native, transferred in from Clemson. Uh, guy kind of came in, and uh, you know, you kind of think of the the, the transfers that maybe uh, kind of get buried in the depth chart at some of these bigger programs, and they're able to go to other Power Five programs where you're able to step into a more uh, carved out impact role. And he's kind of taking advantage of that. And we mentioned Jermaine Waller; it's a big guy, former three star product out of Avalon. Um, it was a really physical guy. He did a really good job playing press uh, as a as a press main corner, um, and I think he's a really good guy. Um, and, and for him to to kind of opt out, uh, I think kind of opens up the the Maryland's passing attack a little bit more. It was definitely uh, the, the the big name to know. Um, Virginia Tech entered this game our fifth in the ACC with just under 220 yards allowed through the air. And Waller is a big reason why he's kind of going up against those, those cornerback or uh, wide receiver ones uh, week in, week out. So um, definitely some some notable absences for them. Yeah, one thing to expect is for them to be physical with the passing game because they've only given up 18 passing touchdowns and they don't really have a lot of points scored on them. They've held six of their opponents, that's half of their games, to under 20 points. Yeah, you're right. Um, and like you said, they sit fourth in the ACC, just under averaging on just under 23 yards per, or 23 points per game, excuse me. Um, but I think it's just going to be very interesting. Like I said, um, you know, Jordan Williams is a guy that I thought kind of entering this game and Amari Barno, the combination of the two of them were guys that were uh, definitely able to generate some pressure against Maryland's offensive line. Uh, I think Maryland's offensive line has really kind of stepped up this year and shown that they can um, take that next step. Um, but to not being to not go against two guys like this uh, of their caliber, I think is definitely notable. Um, Maryland showed that they're able to kind of move the ball. So when you kind of think of, you know, some, some two, two really big key players up front that aren't able to generate pressure uh, puts more pressure on the Hokies uh, back end. Um, so I'll be very curious to see, you know, Maryland's pretty, been pretty uh, clear cut that their pass first uh, offense this year. Um, so, so seeing Loxley test that, uh, test that hooky pressure. Uh, they haven't really done a great job of consistently getting to the quarterback. Um, so I think I think there are definitely opportunities uh, for Maryland uh, that are accentuated by these opt-outs. I got one more question for you, then we're going to talk a little bit about Maryland. Name one guy on this team that we haven't mentioned yet that is a name that we should be looking out for on Virginia Tech, either offense or defense. Well, so I mentioned James Mitchell. That's a notable absence for him on, at uh, tight end. Um, but, uh, you know, 
for, for, for him coming into this year, he kind of had that bigger role. Um, so he only had five catches for 42 yards this year. Um, so I think a guy like uh, uh, Caleb Smith or Nick Gallo, Nick Gallo, uh, the younger brother of uh, P.J. Gallo, former Terp, had uh, 10 catches, 104 yards, didn't finish with the touchdown. Um, Tavion Robinson's another guy who actually ended up leading the team uh, with five receiving touchdowns on the year. But uh, a guy like Gallo where – um, again, you, you're, you're taking away a weapon like Trey Turner. Uh, it's definitely, definitely a name to know. And then another guy is Caleb Smith. Uh, finished, uh, finished the season with uh, uh, 260 yards, 20 catches, a pair of touchdowns. Um, so, again, you, when you kind of think about we mentioned Blackshear. I think that when you think about that hooky offense, he's definitely uh, number one to know. Uh, but Nick Gallo uh, is a guy that maybe can step in and fill, it, fill in that void. And then uh, Caleb Smith is another guy where – um, you'll, you'll definitely hear his name, uh, that Wednesday. All right. That's it on Virginia tech. Let's talk about Maryland right now. We all, and you and I know how they got here, but the fact is they started off four and oh, that was a great start, but then got into a rough part of the season. And you realize all six of those losses, I think every single one of those teams was ranked at one point during the season. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, again, um, and you know what, next year it's going to be very, it's going to be the same thing. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, just the big 10 East, you're going up against Michigan, Penn state, Ohio state. And then when you have a team like Michigan state, that kind of shoots up, Iowa was a team that got super hot early, ended up, uh, finishing top five, top, I believe they were, uh, number five when my Maryland played them it's been a long season. I can't remember. With and the when you have a Minnesota team that had an offensive line that averaged, uh, 23 age, and was bigger than some NFL teams. Yeah, that was not a good matchup yeah. with Maryland, and we all knew it. We yeah, when your right tackle it. is uh, six eight six nine, it's yeah. uh, it's a, it's just all to ask. And, and and but yeah, you know, again, that's what to expect in the Big Ten East. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so it, it's, exactly. It's kind of kind of kind of hard hard for them. But at the end of the day, uh, I think where Maryland kind of take that next step forward is with effort. Um, and I kind of hate talking about you know just the fact that they're just showing effort, but um, you know that's been a problem for Maryland over the years. Well, let's so, be honest. Let's be honest. Past Maryland teams, they don't beat Illinois. They probably don't beat Indiana. I mean, this is a different Maryland team. It's starting to become a different Maryland team. They can get this win over Virginia Tech. That would be big. But, I mean, let's talk about Talia Tagovailoa for a second because, man, did he have a really good season. I know some Maryland fans weren't too happy with some of the turnovers that he had. But you know what? The fact is he broke Maryland's single season, what was it, completions and passing yards record. Yeah, and I believe he's actually two touchdowns away from um... – from tying the single season touchdown and mark as well. Yeah, that's um, just in the top five in a lot of these categories where career passing yards, career touchdowns. Um, I know he has seven 300 yard passing performances this year and a 400 um, yard. Yeah, so I, 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 I do believe that uh, my biggest concern was uh, after the Iowa game was kind of making sure that Lee approved that game to be an outlier, and I think and it was here. Um, so I just think that the, the fact that uh, Leah has been able to kind of take that next step. And, and I, I do agree with Loxie when he said, you know, this is a guy that we can win with. Um, I do believe that Maryland can win with him. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say it as Maryland, he'll, Maryland will go as far as Talia takes him because I feel like that just kind of puts so much pressure on Leah because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you think of things like drops, like that that has been an issue. But um, for Maryland to be able to get a guy like that uh, where he's, he's, he's been able to take the next step and, and from a maturity leadership perspective, he, mm-hmm. he is there. He's exactly the guy that you want. Um, so I think he, he's definitely shown uh, strides of progress from last year to this. Yeah, and he's done this with an inconsistent running game and losing like three of his top four receivers. Um, so Chico Conquo, tight end, he declared for the draft, but he's going to play in this game. And you still, and you have Rakim Jared, who was a five-star uh, recruit coming out of high school. He stepped up in some games this year when they needed him to. And I would be on the lookout for them to get the ball to Chig early and off. Yeah, I, I think I kind of posed the question on the shall and tell pod. Uh, I think it'll be kind of interesting to see when you think of a guy like Chig um, and you just think about Maryland just kind of really struggling with their tight ends over the last couple of years and now being in a position where you can get a tight end to the league. Um, and so I, I think I think that Jake can be a productive NFL tight end. I just don't know. Nationally right now, it doesn't really feel like he's really getting that type of fight. So um, for, for, for him to kind of have that big game, and uh, I'll be kind of interested to see just how, like you said, just how much attention that he gets in this game to kind of help elevate his status. Now, I don't think that Maryland is going to go into this game with the sole focus of getting Chig to the next level. But um, No, no, but... And, 
Yeah, the, you, you, you want you want to set your guy up for success, but I think he's a guy that, uh, you know, proved to be a reliable target, stepped up, filled a big void in, in the receiving game um, down, down the stretch the last three, four games. Um, so I think it'll be very interesting. Yeah, the reason why I think he might be a big part of the game is not just because of that, but also because they're probably going to be focused more on Rakim. They're going to forget about – they might forget about Chig. But defensively, I mean, we know the injuries back in the secondary. We know that Deontay Banks is not going to play – Hopefully, everybody else is going to be fully healthy. I have a question on what's going to what's going to happen with, with Nick Cross. We all thought that he's probably going to declare for the draft, but he hasn't really said anything. You heard anything from there on him? No, no, I don't think we'll see a decision until after the bowl game. Okay, okay. So that was going to be my question before we get a decision before the bowl game. One last thing, and then we're going to go. Prediction. Uh, so I'm going, uh, I, I think I went, the final score was 33-16 uh, on the pod. Um, and I, I kind of feel maybe this, maybe on the surface that point spread sounds a little bit high, but I just think Maryland offensively, I think these opt-outs for Virginia Tech are pretty notable. Those are pretty big. I mean, Trace Turner, Jermaine Waller, um, and both of the defensive linemen, Jordan Williams, Amari Barno, yeah. uh, James Mitchell's another guy. I mean, like the uh, Lysadia Smith, these the offensive linemen who started. Um, you know, those are and that's what I was notable. thinking of earlier, and I couldn't think of his name. That's what mm -hmm. I was thinking of yeah. earlier. They will have. I don't think we've noted this, and those are two players that have declared for the NFL draft, but they will play uh, a wide receiver, Changa Hodge, who missed uh, all but three games this year, recovering from a torn ACL, and then mm -hmm. offensive lineman Brock Hoffman, who all ACC kind of guy, um, actually took a lot of headlines when he transferred into Virginia Tech because uh, NCAA, you know, made some just very peculiar decisions on uh, eligibility, things like that in his circumstance. But uh, I just think those 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 absences for the Hokies are definitely big. Um, so yeah. far, Shag is declared he's going to play. Uh, Maryland, if anything, could get healthier going into this bowl game. Um, so I think 33-16 is, is realistic. Might sound like a lot. Don't know if I would have gone with that at the beginning, but I, I, feel, I feel that that's kind of the direction uh, this game will go. All right, I'm going to go a little conservative here. I say Maryland wins. I'm going to go 28-17. I say they get the 28 on a late touchdown to put the game out of reach. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, just everything you talked about, the opt-outs with Virginia Tech, the fact that Maryland should only get healthier. I mean, they're going to have Chick. Nick is not going to say anything until after the bowl game. And probably Jalen, not going to say anything until after the bowl game as well. Jalen Duncan, left tackle. I mean, pretty much the people that Maryland was going to lose before the game, they pretty much lost. Yeah, so I just think Maryland has more than enough to take uh, to take the game against Virginia Tech. But like I said, I'm yeah. going to go a little conservative because, again, old school – ACC rivals. I mean, that rivalry could just pop right up at any moment in this game. That really could. Yeah. So I think it'll be really interesting and definitely mm -hmm. really big if Maryland's able to get this out, pull this out, uh, get the seven and six with a uh, bowl win over a power five opponent. Um, you know, I know off the, you know, the season uh, definitely beginning felt weird, uh, you know, just felt, felt different than in years past. And then obviously the season kind of went uh, as regular uh, other seasons have gone in the years past. Uh, but I just think for, for Maryland to be able to, to close this out uh, on a two game win streak with, the, with these optic optics and the perception uh, would definitely uh, improve. So uh, big game ahead and, and uh, it'll be a fun matchup. Yes, it will. All right. Amen. Thank you for joining me and we'll see you when early signing day happens. We will be doing early signing day uh, review again. That's all we're going to have for today. I'm Diggs report. That's Ahmed, and I will see you guys next time.